Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Yesterday, we took a comprehensive look at how the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop GPU fared in the laptop market, finding that it was a powerful but expensive upgrade over the RTX 3080 Ti laptop. NVIDIA have definitely been able to make some impressive strides in terms of performance per watt with this new Ada Lovelace generation. But one thing I didn't focus much on in my previous video was how the two RTX 4090 variants compare, the laptop model and the desktop model. I did talk about how dumb the naming scheme was to call the laptop GPU an RTX 4090 when it's really nothing of the sort, but in this video we're going to look at just how significant the margin really is between these parts, and why you might want to spend your hard-earned cash on a gaming desktop instead of a laptop this generation. Without even looking at performance, it's readily apparent merely from the spec sheet that the RTX 4090 desktop and laptop variants are vastly different. It goes right back to the very GPU die itself. The desktop card uses AD102, an impressive 609 square millimeter die with 76 billion transistors. The laptop model, well, it uses AD103, the same die as the RTX 4080, which is just 379 square millimeters in size with 46 billion transistors. This brings with it a substantial reduction in CUDA core count, dropping from a whopping 16,384 to just 9,728 in the laptop model, along with associated reductions in tensor cores, RT cores, and L2 cache. The memory subsystem is also a lot smaller on the laptop model. Here we get just 16GB of GDDR6 memory on a 256-bit bus, versus 24GB of GDDR6X memory on a 384-bit bus. The desktop card not only ends up with 50% more VRAM, but 75% more memory bandwidth as well. And because the laptop GPU is power limited to 150 to 175 watts in the best cases, versus a whopping 450 watts for the desktop card, clock speeds are lower across both the GPU core and memory. The GPU has a boost clock about 500 MHz lower, and memory speeds drop from 21 to 18 gigabits per second. All things considered, the laptop model is about a 60% cut down of the desktop card across all facets, with clock speeds at about 80% of the desktop card's level. Based on this alone, there is absolutely no way the laptop variant and desktop variant will perform the same, so it's highly misleading to give both models basically the same name. I could just maybe cut Nvidia some slack here if both the laptop and desktop models use the same GPU die, but given even that isn't the case, I think it's time to explore performance. On the desktop side, we're using a high-end gaming system because that's what the majority of people buying an RTX 4090 graphics card will be using. In addition to the 4090, my current test system is using an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X CPU, 32GB of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory, the MSI MEG X670E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard, and it's all built inside the Corsair 5000D. On the laptop side, we have the MSI Titan GT77, which has the RTX 4090 laptop GPU configured to a power limit of 150 to 175 watts. There's the Core i9-13950HX processor inside, 64GB of DDR5-4800CL40 memory, plus plenty of cooling capacity to dissipate over 200 watts of combined CPU and GPU power. For this video, we'll be comparing performance at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K with an external display used for all configurations, meaning on the laptop side, the display is directly connected to the GPU for the best performance. Also, when testing at 1080p, I've increased the power limit on the CPU to 75 watts to best alleviate the potential CPU bottleneck. Meanwhile, on the desktop side, everything is a stock configuration with no overclocking. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and at 1080p we see that the RTX 4090 desktop is able to deliver 20% higher performance than the laptop, which is helped by a significant contribution from the faster desktop CPU. As we get more GPU limited, the margin between the two grows. It sits at 31% at 1440p, and then 39% at 4K, in favour of the desktop model. 1% lows are consistently higher as well, again due to the extra CPU headroom available in the desktop system. Watch Dogs Legion is interesting here. At 1080p, we're looking at similar margins to Assassin's Creed, with the desktop 18% ahead. At 1440p, it's a smaller margin than seen previously, with the desktop 4090 coming in 27% faster, but then at 4K, the beefy 450W GPU is able to fully flex its muscles and sit a huge 62% faster. This is the difference between an experience around 70 FPS and around 110 FPS, which is certainly huge for those with the high refresh rate 4K display. 
Far Cry 6 is one of the more unusual cases here. At 1080p we see virtually identical performance between the desktop and laptop models as we're fully CPU limited here and the Core i9-13950HX is able to play to its strengths. This isn't a particularly strong title for Ryzen. At 1440p we also don't see much of an advantage for the desktop card coming in just 8% faster on average with 15% higher 1% lows. But then at 4K, the margin increases to 33% overall, not the biggest margin, but certainly a favourable result for the desktop card. Metro Exodus is a typical showing. At 1080p, the margin between the desktop and laptop variants sits at 18%, similar to some of the other margins that we've seen so far. At 1440p, this increases to 39% in favour of the desktop card, then 59% at 4K. You'd definitely want to be using the desktop model at this high resolution. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the least CPU limited titles at 1080p, giving the desktop card 32% higher performance at the lowest resolution tested. This increased to a 44% margin at 1440p, then a 58% margin at 4K, again showing the relative slowness of the laptop model when fully GPU limited. Cyberpunk 2077 using the Ultra preset without ray tracing or upscaling is quite favourable to the desktop RTX 4090. At 1080p it was 27% faster than the laptop GPU, which then grew to 39% at 1440p and 55% at 4K. With the frame rate seen here, this is again quite significant as it's the difference between 45 FPS at 4K on the laptop and 70 FPS on the desktop, with the desktop being much more playable at that frame rate. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn, which showed a 37% margin between the two models at 1080p, a 48% margin at 1440p, and a 61% margin at 4K, so at all three resolutions there is a strong performance lead for the desktop card in this game. Forza Horizon 5 is another modestly interesting example. I didn't have the lowest margins between the desktop and laptop at 1080p or 1440p. The numbers here are decent with a 26% lead at 1080p and 38% lead at 1440p for the desktop. But at 4K, the margin is a bit lower than expected, just 41% in favour of the desktop model, which is lower than the average and a relatively good result for the laptop variant, though I guess it does still get easily beaten. Gamers playing Modern Warfare 2 will definitely want the desktop configuration as it's quite a bit faster at all resolutions using extreme settings, with similar margins seen using basic settings. 30% faster at 1080p, 45% faster at 1440p and 55% faster at 4K with much stronger 1% lows at all resolutions as well. The latency difference between gaming at 80fps and 120fps is something that I can notice. I'm not really a hardcore multiplayer gamer, but I suspect most serious multiplayer fans would much prefer a desktop setup. In Dying Light 2, the game was pretty easily GPU bottlenecked most of the time, even using rasterization. At 1080p, the desktop card was 39% faster, a margin that grew to 45% at 1440p and 56% at 4K. While the laptop model is playable at 4K using these settings, the desktop is capable of a more high refresh rate experience. Perhaps the worst showing for the desktop configuration and therefore the best for the laptop was Spider-Man Remastered. At 1080p the game is so CPU bottlenecked that there was really no substantial performance difference between the desktop and laptop models. At 1440p the desktop card was only 12% faster, and even at 4K it held just a 28% margin which was the slimmest of any rasterized game that I tested. Desktop configuration is still preferable, but laptop gamers will be happy to know they are still getting a reasonable level of performance relative to the desktop. Now it's time to look at the differences between these two GPUs when looking at ray tracing. Far Cry 6 for example is still very similar between both variants at 1080p and 1440p, while at 4K the desktop configuration is only 25% faster. A very favourable game for the laptop and largely CPU limited on desktop. But in other titles the differences can be massive. In Cyberpunk 2077, using the ultra ray tracing preset and no upscaling, the 4090 is 45% faster at 1080p, 61% faster at 1440p, and a whopping 83% faster at 4K. This is really the difference between playable and unplayable performance. The laptop model is only good for 21 FPS at 4K, which isn't really fixable through upscaling without dropping other quality settings if you are targeting 60 FPS. The desktop card can do 38 FPS here. Yeah, it's not amazing, but certainly quite playable with, say, DLSS balance settings. Dying Light 2 with ray tracing also saw huge margins in favour of the desktop card. 55% faster at 1080p, 71% faster at 1440p, and 77% faster at 4K. That's huge, and again completely changes the discussion around what sort of settings are playable. 
The laptop GPU delivers an acceptable 65 FPS at 1440p using these settings, but the desktop card can offer similar performance at a higher resolution or a much higher frame rate at the same resolution. It's really a night and day difference in this game. What isn't a night and day difference is the ray tracing performance in Spider-Man Remastered. While the margins here are larger than without using ray tracing, here the desktop card is just 15% faster at 1080p, 22% faster at 1440p, and 41% faster at 4K. Ray tracing in this title is extremely CPU intensive, which I suspect is reducing the margin somewhat compared to being fully GPU limited like we saw in Dying Light or Cyberpunk. Looking across all game configurations that I tested, including a handful of ray tracing results, the RTX 4090 desktop GPU is the faster model at 1440p. On average, this variant was 36% faster than the laptop model running at 150 watts, although there is quite a significant spread of results as some games are quite heavily CPU limited, while others are GPU limited. Far Cry 6 and Spider-Man Remastered, for example, don't benefit significantly from the desktop configuration, while games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk 2077, and Resident Evil Village all benefit hugely from the desktop card. This margin grows on average at 4K as we become almost entirely GPU limited across the suite of games tested. On average, the desktop configuration offered 56% more performance than the laptop card, which is pretty massive for two GPUs that have effectively the same name. This includes some especially massive results in Cyberpunk and Dying Light 2 ray tracing, and some less impressive gains in titles like Valhalla and Spider-Man. Meanwhile at 1080p, the margins between the desktop and laptop card are much less pronounced. On average here the desktop card was just 21% faster, still a significant margin, but this did include four test scenarios with a margin less than 10%. Some games are still quite GPU demanding at 1080p and they saw the biggest margins in excess of 30%, but it's clear in CPU limited scenarios that the difference between a flagship desktop CPU and flagship laptop CPU are much less than the differences on the GPU side. After assessing the differences between the RTX 4090 for desktop and the RTX 4090 for laptops, it's abundantly clear why NVIDIA shouldn't have given the laptop model basically the same name as the desktop model. The laptop model is substantially slower when GPU limited, to the point where the desktop card is basically offering one to two tiers of extra performance. This could be the difference between a 60 FPS experience at a given resolution and a 100 plus FPS high refresh rate experience. The margins are especially large at 4K with ray tracing enabled, something I suspect owners of a flagship GPU might be interested in exploring. Even in the worst case scenarios for the desktop GPU like 1080p gaming, the desktop GPU is still faster on average to a notable degree, and it's only a small handful of titles where you could say the two configurations are tied, largely due to CPU limitations. Certainly the 4K results are most representative of the real GPU differences between the variants. The laptop model is about 60% the size of the desktop card in terms of hardware configuration, and it delivers 64% the performance. Of course, it's hardly a fair battle to pit a gaming laptop with about 250 watts of total power capabilities up against a desktop GPU that alone consumes above 400 watts in some games. It's completely unrealistic to expect the most powerful desktop card to fit inside a laptop form factor. I mean, just, just look at the size of this thing. But while I know it's unrealistic, there are casual buyers out there who may be misled into genuinely believing the desktop and laptop RTX 4090s are effectively identical when that couldn't be further from the truth. And that's a failure of the naming scheme, which is confusing and misleading. I think Nvidia here just needs to admit that it's not possible to put their flagship desktop GPU into a laptop and give the laptop GPU a different name. At the very least, this should be an RTX 4090M, but even better would be the RTX 4080M, because then it would match the desktop model in GPU die and have the M suffix to make it clear it's clocked lower and power limited relative to the desktop card. The reason why I believe Nvidia doesn't do that is giving the desktop and laptop GPUs the same name allows laptop vendors to overprice their gaming laptops and put them at a similar pricing tier to a much more powerful desktop. For example, a high-end gaming desktop using the RTX 4090 is priced around $3,500 US, while the cheapest RTX 4090 gaming laptops are also about $3,500 US. Were this laptop GPU actually named the RTX 4080M, it would look a bit silly being priced at $3,500 up against a full RTX 4090 desktop. 
It's also disappointing to see that the margin between desktop and laptop variants of the same GPU name have grown over the years. With the RTX 3080, the desktop card was 33% faster than a 135W laptop variant at 1440p. Now with the RTX 4090, the desktop card is at least 40% faster when not CPU limited at 1440p, and more like 55% faster at 4K. That's because the hardware gap between laptop and desktop has been growing, as has power consumption, laptops have stayed relatively flat topping out at 150 watts on the GPU, while the desktop cards have shot up to 450 watts. It's very hard for a laptop variant to keep up. While there aren't a lot of positives here, the RTX 4090 desktop GPU variant is much faster and better value than the laptop variant, it is impressive to some degree that the laptop variant is only 36% slower than the desktop variant while consuming way less than half the power. The laptop RTX 4090 is clearly far more efficient, while the desktop card is running well outside the efficiency window at ridiculous levels of power. You have to commend Nvidia for delivering a huge uplift in performance per watt versus ampere, it just would have been nice if it were named and priced more appropriately. Anyway, that's it for this investigation, comparing the two variants of the RTX 4090. If you do want to see the RTX 4090 pitted up against things more in its league, things like laptop GPUs, we do have our full investigation of that up on the channel right now, so go check that out. We also have links in the description below, our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. So if you're interested in signing up, supporting our independent testing and gaining access to some cool bonuses, then do check that out as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.